Hello, I'm Max Balagde. And I'm George Clark, and welcome to the Useless Hotline. TikTok wasn't working out for us, so we decided to set up our own little business. We did, and the Useless Hotline is a place where we help you with your queries, no matter how weird, disgusting, or embarrassing they are. But it won't always just be us. Mm -mm. Some weeks we may be joined by a little guest, an interviewee, if you will. However, this week, it's just me and this green t-shirt wearing buffoon. When I put this on, I literally was like, I'm dressing a bit like George today. I've got that t-shirt. Do you? Yeah, we went, we both went to Elise, Oh my god! You both went to Elijah. Oh my god. At the same time, we got it. Also, our producer, for the first time ever since we've um, been filming this podcast, Mm -hmm. has just trusted us to leave the room and go and grab some lunch. And I feel like. He's trusted us for him to leave. Yes. We're not doing this on the move. No, we're not. Audio (laughs) listeners, um, we are currently stationary. Uh, But I feel like. (laughs) Stationary, the office joke. Oh! I feel like when a teacher leaves the classroom, I feel a bit weird. Yeah. I feel like we can do anything and we, like, because usually if we say anything that's a bit too crazy, he reigns us in, but we've got nobody. Let's just cancel ourselves. Oh my God, shall we? Right, you say a bad word. Okay. Uh, Should I do the one that you said before we started filming? Yeah, the one that I always say. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm comfortable saying that. Oh, that's fine. It's it's more my thing, isn't it? To be that outwardly awful. Yeah. (laughs) God, what am I like? Um, but George, how have you been? I have been... Hmm... When did I last see you? I've been good. I don't know when you last saw me, but it was I've when we been filmed good. This. Probably I've, like a week ago. Um, I was ill for a bit and then I wasn't ill. Oh yeah, you were ill. No, I'm not yeah. ill. I'm trying to get my appetite back. Oh. Because I'm trying to be big and strong. Oh. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to get back into the gymnasium, uh. which doesn't help, I guess does help, but also doesn't help the mental side of things that Arthur posted a TikTok yesterday that I was uh, topless in, didn't think he'd post it, um, and there was a comment with 80 replies that was just, Same. thought George had a six pack, didn't expect him to have a dad bod. Oh, that's, that, imagine what they would say if they saw my body then, fuck and, me. And 80 replies, people be that, like, Same what? Like, don't be mean. He's oh. like, but, but not, what not, is a dad not bod? Being like, not being like, oh, he's not got a dad bod. Just be like, don't be mean about his dad bod. Oh. No. Right, okay. I need to clear this up. What is a dad bod? What is the like the bit where you cross and it's like you no know. longer does it just mean I mean I maybe they would say that you have a dad bod purely because you're hairy. And that's more dad vibe, isn't it? Mm. Like because yeah, you are very hairy. I'm not that hair. I've, I mean, I you try, are. I like, try and trim. If you compared it to someone that has no hair, you are hairy. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> not hairy, hairy. To a naked mole rat, you are yeah. full haired mole rat. Um, rat. <laughs> mole. Yeah, Thanks. just. Uh, <laughs> either way, not that great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't get it. Because I wouldn't say. I, in my eyes, dad bod means like you have a bit of a beer belly, mm. kind of big tits. But you're just kind of big in general. So you kind of wear it well. But I don't see you as like big tit man. No. <laughs> or like big belly man I feel like you just have like if anything above average body Thank like you, you have like muscles do you, you. yeah I don't Thanks fucking nice. know I'm definitely below average I have I have I have a mum I, I have a have, I, I have a have pregnant mother bod that's what I have <laughs> That's what I have. I have anti bod. You have eight year old bod as well. I have like it? drunk anti bob. That's what I Bob. <laughs> <laughs> that was me in high you school. Had a drunk anti-bob. I had a drunk anti bob in high school. <laughs> um no, yeah. I am doing um intermittent fasting again. Nice. Um I find it quite interesting because I How intermittent is it? It's like once a month. I allow- <laughs> <laughs> where, where it doesn't actually matter. No. <laughs> I allow myself to eat for twenty four hours a day. No. Um <laughs> Eight hours a day, I'm allowed to eat. So I do it from either 11 till 7 or 12 till 8. Well, in the remaining 16, you're allowed to go, ah, <laughs> yeah. you just eat loads. Baby, I scoff. <laughs> um, but it's been really interesting because I have learned what it feels like to be hungry. Because mm. for the And I realized that for the longest time, I was never hungry. If I felt the slightest bit of hunger, I would eat immediately. Mm. So... I'm now like realizing, oh, it doesn't actually feel that bad because I wake, uh, for example, I'll get hungry like just before I go to sleep. Yeah. And that's when I would usually like eat a packet of Harry Bowls or something healthy nice. like that. And um, oh my God, our producer's back, thank God. Callum, I said that I felt like a teacher. Where have you when, been, bitch? I felt like when a teacher had left the classroom, I was going a bit crazy. <laughs> it started to make me feel like I was a bit like wild, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I feel, I feel safe now. Um, but yeah, so I would, I, I, and I'd be like going to bed and I'd be like, oh, I'm a bit hungry. 
And then I would just not eat and I'd wake up and it didn't affect me. And I was like, oh, I didn't need to eat. Mm. But I was just choosing to eat because, and also I'm really learning that your stomach listens to your brain. Oh, it does. And your ears and your nose. Mm. Like a lot. So like, I it will sure not be hungry. Yeah. I will not be hungry at all. And I will smell food or I will like see somebody eating and I will want it. And mm. then my stomach will grumble and I go, excuse me. That's not how this works. Do you get that when you look at me? No, I can get like the reverse. So my stomach wants to throw up food that I've eaten. Right, okay. Yeah, That's nice. um, especially with your big granddad, Bob. Bob, why am I saying Bob? <laughs> Come on, granddad, Bob. Today's, today's guest. He makes me sick. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? I, just before doing this, went to the bank and bought a house. You found a house to buy at the bank? No. I completed my payment. You live in a bank? I do, yes. I am the bank. I completed my payment and bought a house. Congratulations. Well Thank That's you. That's really good news. Woo! Thank you, everybody. Max is now a homo nerd. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, George. Fun. You are. I cried in the street. Did you? Yeah. I uh, called my mum and I cried in the street. And um, I bought the wrong one! <laughs> 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 I couldn't believe it because I was just like... I, and also, how weird is this? The bank that I had to go to was the exact same bank that when I moved to London mm. to do my internship mm. three or four years ago, mm. I had to go to to change my details for my bank. That is so weird. I was sat in the bank going, I was here four years ago. And do, I think- Do you remember I, me? And I was like- It's me. Hi, hi, nice to see you again, Carol. <laughs> I probably had around like, two grand three thousand pounds in my bank account you can't relate to that how much so, do you have now so most people how much basically do you have now, Max? so george basically most people don't get the do you know that trust fund that you got most people don't get that so um i had around two or three thousand pounds in my bank account when i moved to london how much do you have now? um like two or three mil easily like i'm i'm absolutely minted no um and then i was there just just buying a house and i it was so weird. I, I I wanted to cry to the guy that was sorting it out for me, but it just felt very inappropriate. Because <laughs> I looked at the number that popped up on the screen, and he was like, right, can you just confirm that? And I was like, yeah. Press the button, and he was like, oh, congratulations. I was like, thank you. Yeah, this is just weird, isn't it? I was like, this is just crazy. I just sent that much amount of money. That's crazy. And he was like, yeah, this is my job. I deal with that quite a lot, actually. And I was like, yeah, That's pocket crazy. change, brother. Yeah, literally. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. Um, but Did I'm you ever discuss... Grateful money you make online no would i yeah i mean i so would there's, there's so a whole like, there's a whole thing that like the audience would love to know how much people online make and i get like it because how much a video made a youtuber or something i i think the the thing that i've learned through speaking to multiple different people is that it's very different for everybody like a mm. lot of it is to do i think that's this is mostly to do with like tiktokers but since we all kind of came up with not a lot of knowledge of the industry but a lot of it mm. is to do with which management you have Indeed. like when i was with my old management and then the day that i switched to the management that i'm with now with you yep my fees for what i would charge for things tripled not because I'd done anything, not because I deserved that ma more amount of money, but because yeah. the management that we're with were like, Max, you were underselling yourself. And that was when I was with the management. When I was, oh my God, when I was um, managing myself, I would literally charge like 50 quid for a branded video. Cause mm. I'd be like 50 quid for a video. That is absolutely sick. That's a night out. That's a good night out as well, where I'm from. Oh yeah, baby. So I was like, that is brilliant. But then, I mean, what I realized when I was doing my internship and I would see what giant companies spend on like their marketing budget for a month. Yeah. Sometimes for like TV and stuff like that, the budget can be upwards of like 800,000 pounds. Oh yeah, millions. Bro. Like literally. So when I realized that that would be for, uh, say like, oh, this is hard to explain without sound sounding stupid. Should I just try it anyway? But I mean, you've never stopped yourself from that, trying to sound stupid that before. That's so. very true, George. Um, so say if a company had, they, they have like a million pounds to spend. Okay. They will probably spend, if they're a bigger company, oh God, I'm going to burp. Oh, I already <laughs> See, <laughs> I could feel it. I'm so sorry, audio listeners um, and physical listeners. What are they called? Visual. Visual listeners. Uh, viewers. <laughs> a visual listener. <laughs> that is the word. Um, Okay, say if they have a million pounds, 
they will probably put like six hundred thousand pounds of that towards TV, to which they're gonna pump that out as an advert that will like say, "Come on after Coronation Street," that let's say two million people will see, Ooh, but only big viewing numbers for Coronation Street. Hell these days. yeah, baby! Yeah, actually, that's probably a bit of a, oh well. Um, that let's say two million people see that advert, yeah. and less than half of them are in their target market. Let's say it's shampoo. And yeah. they're targeting the shampoo towards like under thirties. And all the viewers of Coronation Street are famously bold. All <laughs> 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 right, okay, maybe that's a bad example. Um, but then it's basically what I'm trying to get at is that they can spend loads of money to put it to a TV advert, and they will only really, maybe at the most, if two million people get about fifty thousand to a hundred thousand people Agree. watch it, Agree. that actually will take notes and will actually care. Versus if only there are a way to target a specific demographic using, I don't know, Max Belegde? Yes, or George Clarke. I don't like that. Yeah, well, you said my name weird, so I said yours. Um, but then you have influencers like us who can get, so let's say, like minimum 500,000 views on a TikTok. Oh, on pounds per TikTok. No, <laughs> per TikTok. That's what I make, everybody. Minimum um, 500,000 pounds <laughs> of TikTok. No, 500,000 views per TikTok. I don't know and, minimum for me these days. That's Yeah. Um, and, um, I mean, yours just got you on BBC Radio 1, baby. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hamsters. Hamsters. They are crazy. They're going ham. Oh, they are. Um, and those 500,000 people that watch our like a video of ours are likely to be more what's the word engaged, engaged that's the one mm-hmm. than the people just sat there watching coronation street seeing an advert they probably fast forward a through more the adverts engaged appropriate viewer for the advertiser to target yeah so when i started to realize this i was like and bear in mind i'm not saying that we get like two hundred thousand pounds every time we do a brand deal that's we get nowhere like near every that every other brand deal yeah, yeah yeah of course um but when i started to realize this i was like oh my gosh you should charge like a, like a fair bit of money for things. So when I started to realize that I would then be like, right, so I remember I had 800,000 followers. Five pounds, please. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I remember I, I had 800,000 followers at the time when I was managing keep myself. You were about to say pounds. No, <laughs> keep, chance. Keep no chance, I wish. <laughs> um, and I would charge 800 pounds because I thought 800,000 followers, I should charge 800 pounds. Pound per thousand. There we go. That made sense to me. And then these companies would still whittle me down to, I remember I did this three video campaign for 500 pounds and I was buzzing my tits off. You best believe nice. I was literally like, I told all my friends, I told my mom, I was like, 500 pounds for three videos? That's incredible. Like, I've ate, like I'd have like i never earned anything. Then I got signed to a management and they were like, Max, no, that should have been like, I think at the time they were like 3,000 pounds. And I was like, that's more than my monthly wage. Like what? This is, this is wild. So yeah, I mean, I, when I speak, I speak about money very openly with like other influencers because I don't want them to get screwed over the way that I did. Yeah. Because it's literally you've it's created. Not, it's not in like a, this is how much money I've earned. No. It's, it's I like just want to help. Collaborative people. sort of thing. Like, how much did that brand give you? Yeah. Like, what does your audience equate to in terms yeah. of like? Yeah. It's, I remember it's being sat down with Maddie Grace Jepsen. We love. Um, I was on a trip with her, ski trip. Hopefully we'll have nice. her on the pod to discuss it because that was a, a trip from hell and it's highly hilarious stories that came from it. Nice. But it was just me and her. Yeah. And um, we, she, she had gained all these followers and she'd not, she'd not really been earning much money from social media. She wasn't signed to a management and she told me that she was thinking of signing to the one that we're with. And yeah. um, I was still with my old one at the time, but I got the chance to sit down with her and she had only done gifted things. So like we were on a trip and I believe I was getting paid to be there to like promote the company and she just wasn't. And she found out and I was like, and she was like, do you think that I would be able to like quit my job if I did this? I was like, Maddie, you are a <laughs> hilarious person with such an engaged audience. Like, of course, but you it just wouldn't crazy know. how many of our audience are gonna get married soon. <laughs> Shut up. But it's just, it's such a thing as like, we don't know about it. You're not supposed to know about this stuff. So I am more yeah. than happy to sit down with somebody and give them any information that they need. Yeah. In the words of Jake Paul, my teacher never taught me that. Never? My teacher never taught me that. Ah, emotional. How to buy a Lambo cash. How to waggle money out of a brand deal. Mm. I mean, my I, teacher never taught me that. And I just had a phone call with my mom before you guys walked in, and she you said that she was. Deal with your mom? No, I'm not. Um, she Is said. Is my mom any eligible bachelors out there? <laughs> I hate this man. Um, 
she got emotional and she was like, I'm just so proud of you that since you started to earn money, you you haven't spent it. Like you've bought a house, you've saved all your money. Because I tell the stories about people who literally, like I was with a group of influencers once and I would say that I was the only one that didn't spend a minimum of £20,000 on bags. Oh, look at me. I'm ex and I don't spend money. I'm just like you out there. Oh, so humble. I've just bought a house. So <laughs> shut the fuck up. I don't care what you say. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important. And also, we you don't get taught about finance. You don't get taught about... No. It. I don't come from a family that knew anything about it. So I had to educate myself and get an accountant, get all of that. So I think it's really important to speak about it because the government don't want us to know because then we'll all have money and then they won't be able to control us. So listen, don't spend your money. Be safe, mm. save, and look after your future. You deserve it. You're amazing. I saw a, I saw a clip on... Um Jack Joseph and Cole Anderson James's podcast mm. uh, called Low IQ, so I don't know how much to, to believe <laughs> what he said. But apparently, the government were trying to streamline it to make taxes far more easy to, um, like, pay. And they literally, because if you think about it, you pay a tax to the government, and they say, "Oh no, that was too much. Here's some back." Or they go, "Oh, you haven't paid enough. This is what you need to give us extra." Mm. Why does it not just come through and say, "This is what you need to pay. Pay it." And apparently it's because all of the like um, accountancy firms and like sort of these, these like tax agencies or whatever, I don't know what the, uh, the proper jargon is for them, um, but they all paid the government loads yeah. of money to make, it, all to make it difficult so that people had to go to them to yeah. sort their taxes out, tax out and that's how they get all the money. Society is corrupt. Society <laughs> is corrupt. It literally is from start to finish. They make it so that rich people stay richer and poor people stay poor. They don't want Lucky people. Lucky for us rich people. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. They don't want poor people. <laughs> they don't want poor people to understand how money works or understand how tax works or understand how investing works. My sister went to... Um, this like women's only um investment you meeting your sister what <laughs> <laughs> shut up she did went to this like your what? sister did you say my sister yeah your sister went to a woman's only <laughs> yeah no, don't worry, carry on. why is that funny george hates women pass it on oh my god look at him anti-feminism yeah, right here a, that's horrible it's okay it's just um, funny that that's you're so crazy he's literally no. he just kicked me under the table oh my god his he's physically assaulted a gay person a now. Lesbian was the this is oh so it's there. so it's the fact that she's a lesbian you find funny. She went to an all girls thing. Oh right! Wow! Wow! Just, just, just cut that. Wow. No, keep it in. Keep it no, in. No, actually, Alex. cut it out because then it makes it seem. No, like I was this is horrible. Oh no. my god! I, it, I can't believe it. He's so homophobic. Um, so my sister went to an all women's investment meeting to teach women so they don't even teach women how to invest how to do things like this like because they don't want people to succeed when it comes to tax yes they make it difficult to understand so that you mess up and you have to pay fines it's so infuriating disgusting so everybody educate yourself especially if you're a lesbian woman that george hates <coughs> i went to my sister's was was being led in <laughs> I went to my sister's lesbian wedding. Nice. At the, oh I my god! You. you look very cute in your little suit. Thank you, thank you. I need to read out some comments that I saw. How did your uh, best man speech go? Oh my god, it went really good. Um, Can you give I, me a rendition? I started it by saying, "Not many people know what it feels like to have a sibling that is so incredibly supportive, hilarious, and kind." Sorry, this but Ellie. Story does know how that feels because she has me <laughs> and everyone was like oh, ho, ho, ho. and um who wrote that for you i wrote it how dare you and um my sister's wife is from new zealand so i started by saying i would firstly just like to thank brexit for um like completing in no, for happening in 2020 instead of 2015 otherwise this lovely couple would have never had the chance to meet each other nice. Make it and everyone was like oh yeah that's best such a take a yeah best just divide the audience left and right that was great but i need um let me find these pictures why does it fucking i message if you're listening what is your deal <laughs> cool straight facts max <laughs> sorry like you used to be able to go into a message group and then see the pictures that you have sent, like, in the thing. Max, can no longer me. do that. You're boring me. Sorry, I'm trying to find... Sorry, guys, we can pause this. In the meantime, this. fun game. 
Okay. I um, put on my Instagram this morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, give me your your juiciest unpopular opinions, and I want I want oh. you to judge them with me, Max. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, orange juice is better than apple juice. I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. I think apple juice is better than orange juice. Ooh, quite unpopular then. Is that unpopular? I think it depends on my mood. I blanket prefer apple juice to orange juice. Don't bring comfort into it. Will <laughs> blanket statement. Under my blanket. I'm love not. A bit of apple juice. <laughs> I'm not an orange juice man, and I'm just putting that out there. Don't ever bring me orange juice. Better being too cold than too warm. I would agree. Yeah, because you can wrap yourself up, but you can't cool yourself okay, down. But but uh, in terms of not. Um, the ability to make oh, you just the actual the feeling, yeah, the actual just the state of being. Too I agree. Cold. I would rather. Oh, they're both horrible. I hate being either. Can I just be lukewarm at all times, <laughs> please? Can I just lukewarm? <laughs> I um, don't like that. YouTube is greater than Disney, which is greater than Netflix. Wait, let me work this out. YouTube is greater than Disney. No, I disagree with that. I would say YouTube is better than Netflix don't know i mean like right let's think about it from start to finish <laughs> the netflix content is better um arguable because they've got a a wide array of good and shit that keeps getting put back up put on taken away put, put on taken away you're like oh i wanted to watch this type it in no longer on there mm. whereas youtube everything is there the whole time go back and watch what you used to like there's always there's more stuff getting put on more consistently that you can find more tailored to you. Yeah, I just love Netflix so much. I love well, you. I like YouTube. What do you, what do you actually watch on Netflix? What do I watch on Netflix? Um, Drag Race. I currently watched The Witcher. I've just finished The Witcher. Stranger mm. Things. I love. Um, Below after Deck. You've done, after you've done those series, like what happens next? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What, what happens next after you've watched those series? I watch them again. There's Harry Potter on there at the minute. So that's the that's problem, great. Right? So I don't want to keep just watching it over and over again. But what do you do when you've... Oh, do you mean... Like, I go down like dumb rabbit holes on YouTube. I, recently, I've been watching a guy... But you could equally do that on houses. Netflix. Oh, I guess you can't really do that on Netflix. No, you can't... You, you, but they have very cool, like, shows on Netflix. Like, Jake they have Paul's very... just had a Netflix special put out about him. Oh, really? I rest my case. Oh, YouTube's God. better. But Jake, Jake Paul came Jake. up on YouTube. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> right, next one. Okay. Um, said on popular opinions, George Clarkey is fit as... Oh, <laughs> George Clarkey is ugly. I think that's pretty popular opinion. Dad bod. Right. I think Drake <laughs> is incredibly overrated and he's just boring and creepy. I Do you know what? I kind of second this notion. Um, I mean, Drake, I was... I, I, Actually, do you want to know? I genuinely just had the thought in my head. Is it bad to, you know, badmouth Drake in case he ever wants to come on the podcast? What the fuck is wrong with me? I don't know. I don't know who, I don't know who we think, I think we are right now. If you're watching um, Drizzy. Yeah. Um, Drizzy, if you're watching, make sure to hit us up in the DMs. Yeah, we'll I, I believe that when, I just think a male artist has to do so much less than a female artist to get world renowned like for example if you look at the stuff that Nicki minaj has done and put out how mm -hmm. many times she's reinvented herself how much like different varieties of music she's done she's done acting she's done so many things and she has nowhere near the amount of like influence as drake but why are you disrespecting drizzy what's wrong with him i just think he's so average i think he's very talented but mm -hmm. i don't think he's any more talented than like the, the next like male rapper i feel like i'm gonna get a lot of shit for saying that that is just my opinion i understand that many people do not mm. feel that way many people love his music i too love his music i think he has some really good music yeah but my favorite songs are the ones when he has a female feature no, my I'm favorite sorry one to say is the one that goes you know it's a lot of that that's my favorite one of his and when you uh, think Nicki minaj is literally like a mastermind and she don't get half the credit that he does. <laughs> it pisses me off. I'm sorry to say it. Um, unpopular opinion that Max is not that annoying. Thank you. Oh, wait. Is that bad? That that means that many people think that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I'll take it either way. Uh, I just bought a house. I don't give a fuck. Jesus Christ. Cheese Nobody can tell me nothing. Cheesecake is the best type of cake. I would agree, actually. I, Ooh, I okay. love a cheesecake. Right, let's break this down because there's... Have you okay, ever had... <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Let's just break um, it down for the audio listeners. <clears throat> there's ice cream cake. Have you ever had that? Uh, that's that's just fake cheesecake, really, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's like gooey cakes. I kind of like a gooey cake. But oh, bloody hell, it's so like a dirty to me. <laughs> Ew. Oh. And but, yeah, do you want to do gooey cake tonight? Oh god. <laughs> but I do think that um, yeah, I think that cheesecake <laughs> is the best. <laughs> Ooh, gooey cake. Ew. Um. Pineapple is the best topping to ever have gone on pizza. No. Do you agree? What's your, what's your stance with pineapple on I'm pizza? I'm like not as some people get quite. Yeah, aggressive. but I think people get overly invested in this. I agree. Like if there's a if there's a slice of Hawaiian pizza mm. next to me, I'll go mm, Hawaiian pizza. I'll eat it. I won't pick the pineapple off, but I won't ask for pineapple to be on there. I don't think I would. I mean, I've tried it. Not for me personally. I don't want some juicy explosion in my mouth. You stop right there, Mister. I don't like whatever is about to come out of your move hole. Um, I felt like <laughs> <laughs> I felt like Andrew when you'd pref- uh, oh, been God. angry at him. Jesus, I don't want a juicy explosion in my mouth. Stop <laughs> right there, Mister. <laughs> yeah, I just prefer like a savoury thing all around if I'm eating it. I don't like it when we combine the two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Buzz cuts and mullets are ugly. What's your stance on mullets? I think some people some people can suit them. I think that they looked really hot for to, a time to a length. Some people get to the length where you're like, oh, that looks nice. So this is the sort of length that I'm looking at. Yeah. Where it just sits there, not too long behind the... But then when it gets long and you can start swinging it, yeah. that's when I'm like, yeah, you, but you're, then, you're but then a horse, are you, but mister? Then some girls Trimothy. have had mullets. Hmm? Some girls have had mullets with like longer hair. Miley Cyrus had a mullet for a while. And yeah. I think that looked really cool. She didn't have the shaved mullet, though. God, I can't I, I'm not a fan of the girl with the mullet. See, I just think it's quite cool. I think boys with mullets can sometimes look really good. But yeah, I agree. Sometimes not. Um, I like to heat my cereal up in the microwave. That is me. I'm that person. I feel very Magnus passionately about 0405. this. Magnus 0405. No, I am not Magnus 0405. Hello, Magnus. <laughs> but I used to always... So this is how... Um, like My mum just used to basically be my little bitch. Love her to death, but she did. Right. I would come downstairs in the morning. Okay. And how ridiculous is this that my mum even let me do this, actually? Instead of making my own cereal, I would get a post-it note and put it on the cereal box that I wanted with the description of how I wanted it made. <laughs> Sorry. I know. What? That is wild. So I would literally like, oh my God, I've literally got some right here. I would write like, so it would be on the Rice Krispies and I would put like warm milk, um, minute in the microwave, and then say like, right, like half full with milk. So it's like quite milky. I was gonna say, how much description is there to a bowl of cereal? I mean, you can, you can have a little bit of milk well, and some then days it's mostly like, dry. I'm feeling milky today. Yes. Fill me up, mum. Yes. Mm. No, no, Joanne doesn't deserve that. Oh God. Um, but yeah, wow. We should have our sisters on the podcast as well. I thought this weekend. Nice. We should schedule that in, Yeah. both of our sisters. Um, right, do one more because I have something that I want to show uh, you. Hmm, what's the what should I go for here? Um, hmm, what's a good one? If a child is biting you, it should oh. be socially acceptable to be able to bite them back. No. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how young they are. If it's like a nine-year-old, I'm beating the shit out of that kid. No, I'm joking. I'm not really. Um, <laughs> Punishing children, what's your thoughts? How should you do it? I think some children need to be punished harder. Is that weird to say? No. it's just Not in a weird way. I just think <laughs> I've been... Oh, my gosh. I was go- I was getting... The last time I went on a plane... can't remember where I was going. I'm just, I'm just I was a jet punishing setter. some kid. No. <laughs> this person's kids came up behind me and Andrew. When we were going to New York. Yeah. Came up behind me and Andrew... And the child was in between my legs. Oh, in between my... I shut told up. you about this. Man. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> my God, no. I'm not saying weird things. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be sincere. But the child... This, this guy had like four kids. And when I tell you, they were in between my legs. And I just... I looked at the man. I was like, are you not going to say anything? And he didn't even... He looked right through me. I wanted to go... Hi, sir. Excuse me. I'm, I'm not a parent myself, um, but I will throw your child out the fucking window of the aeroplane if you do this shit again. I will throw you personally out of the aeroplane. It's quite good news that you're not a parent if that's your, your Yeah, reaction. true. But then we got onto the plane, running up and down the aisles. The air hostess had to literally say to them and bring them back to their um, parents. And I was like, this is too much. Yeah. At this point, you should strap your child to the seat 
and lock them in for life and be like, right, you're staying there until you get off the plane because this is bad behavior and you need to be told. I like that what you've done there is made putting the child's seatbelt on and telling him to sit down for the rest of the flight. You've made that, that is what you've asked for. Yeah. <laughs> but you've made it sound so much worse. <laughs> True, yeah. No, but I because think- back in, the reason I asked the question, because back in day, mm. people, sc- school teachers, I think that's Cane, too far. Slipper. I think that's um, too far, but I have friends that did are Did you teachers. ever get hit as a kid? Did I? Yeah. I think like a few times, but nothing booty? like crazy. What? Face? Booty? Where did you slap? Where did you slap I a kid? I think sla- smack on the bum. <laughs> not, you're, not you personally, where no. we to punish the worst. Do you know what I love to do? I love to do this to you my friends. smack kids' bums? No, I love to do it in my fr- to my friends and to Andrew. I love to, if we're like in a supermarket, just go up to them in the rear and go, I will pull your pants down in front of everybody in this supermarket and I will smack your bottom if you don't stop misbehaving right now. <laughs> is that weird? Did you just say, is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> <Did you? laughs> <laughs> you were saying it as if I was meant to go. Oh, I do that too. I do that all the time. What are you talking just, about, <laughs> you weirdo? You said that way too comfortably. That was that was locked and loaded, ready to go before I even finished the question. <laughs> I should have explained. What? I just find it funny. Oh, oh, oh! I've been meaning to tell you. Oh, what? I find it funny to imagine, like, pretend that I am their parent saying that. Oh, With your boyfriend? Yeah, because it's just funny. But I realise that it can be... See, I'm just not thinking in the weird, perverted way that you are. I'm just having a good time. <laughs> can you deliver that to me again, please? That right, so I, I, I fully go up to him and I go, I will put your pants down in front of everybody in this restaurant and I will smack your bottom if you do not start behaving right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's I'm so good. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I'm going to do it to you at a point when you won't realise. Do it to the camera. I want it to be a meme. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Right. I will... <laughs> Wait. Somebody put this at the start of an edit. <laughs> oh my god. Right. I will. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I will pull your pants down and smack your bottom in front of everybody in this supermarket if you do not start to behave. Okay. Shut up. Be quiet and start behaving. I could be a dominatrix. That's a child. No, it's not a child. <laughs> it's not a child. I, I'm, I'm saying it to adults. Are the, why are you pretending to be a parent then? Did I just say I'm a parent? What? I don't know what's going on. I want to move <laughs> on. I don't like it here anymore. Oh my gosh. Right. Okay. Um, in other news, you... Um, Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> Sorry, I, oh my god, I just completely zoned out and replied to a message. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, in other news, um an Instagram account has been revealed called yeah. You've Been Hamstered. So funny. It's it, the best thing I've ever seen. It's it's just weirdly well done. Yeah. It's incredible. I don't know, like, it's it's a very good Photoshop, but they've blown up massively. In the last 24 hours, they've gained over 30,000 yeah, followers. because you made a video about it, and it literally... <laughs> I got BBC Radio 1. That is just brilliant. <laughs> like, I love the internet for this exact reason. Um, but literally, so I found out about this account, like, a few months ago, and I remember being like, oh, they didn't, like, they've not made one about me. Like, I liked a few of the pictures. I didn't realize we were one of the first people that they hamstered, me and you. <laughs> we were. I didn't even know. So they might even listen to the podcast. Hi. Um, but I thought that we could rate some of the pictures that they've made. Yes. Because some of them are absolutely incredible. Right. What's this guy called? You know him, don't you? That's Ethan. Ethan. Just Ethan. Um, what, do you want, do you want his, like, government name? No, what but name? I mean, like, do people, but if I said Ethan, would people know who that Ethan is? Ethan from the side member, Zynga, right, okay, Ethan Payne, take, pick your poison, mate. Okay, right, let's go through some. Okay, um, firstly, me and George, I think that this is absolutely brilliant. I, I think that's an underrated one for, like, a, a good contender for, because... 
my the one in my hand <laughs> so is just i am just holding it it's a huge hamster but, <laughs> uh, but yours yours is just <laughs> yours looks like you're just flinging a hamster it's around in a so night good. out mine is so realistic like it's it's even blurry where it's supposed to be blurry that is my hand i don't know how they've done it it's so good it it's literally mental. the best shit ever i right. like the football ones of, right I think you get one up i think her name's alicia layman okay. i'm not sure if that's the first i know her last name's layman it's <laughs> where it looks like they're just she's just doing kicky up he's with her hamster. Ah, <laughs> it's so good <laughs> it's literally the best thing in the world oh my god i love it um i um, put this into the the football group chat i was like nothing to do with football football but has anyone seen this you've been hamstered account and sent the one of the the sidemen charity match because look how many they've done there Do they all have a hamster all of them have a hamster that and what i didn't realize when i sent it i sent it in and like, ethan was like yeah i've seen i've been hamstered before i said west hamstered well that was quite funny yeah. uh, uh, but when you zoom in ethan's got one in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> this is the best thing ever <laughs> i love it talia Mar with the hamster yes that is just brilliant what is your favourite one though? Pick your favourite. Right, my favourite. Oh my gosh, Nella Rolls with the hamster. That's incredible. <laughs> it's just incredible. Um, I think this one is underrated because you it it's it's you barely can see the hamsters <laughs> are there until you zoom in and they're just really well put in our hands. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Right, my favourite. I think my favourite is the Chloe Burrows one. Yeah, <laughs> so Chloe's perfect. so good. It's literally just like, she's just holding up a hamster. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, you've oh. been hamstered. Best account ever. So Absolute good. best account ever. And George gave them business advice, didn't you? I did. They're now, they're now doing it where if you DM them, I don't know if they want the public knowledge because they might get so many DMs. <laughs> yeah. But if you DM them for a small fee, you can get hamstered. It's incredible. If you're not famous enough to get them down or just organically. <laughs> oh, it's just the best. I love it so much. Right. Um, moving on. What a great time. Oh, one more thing that I wanted to say. Okay. <coughs> before we get into doing our job. All right. Um, <coughs> ooh, ooh. So we brought up Elphaba, if you remember, mm. on... Was it not two Not as parents, episodes? just on the podcast. No, yes, not as... We are not Elphaba's parents. Um... <laughs> Uh, two weeks ago on the podcast yeah. and she messaged me personally saying that she's had a lot of transphobic comments and things like that um, just wanted to publicly say we already have said multiple times that if you watch or listen to this podcast you know that we do not support transphobia so mm, want to put that out there <clears throat> absolutely um, and she also went on to say a hell of a lot of other things that I don't really want to get into um, but I just think I think many things about this situation. <laughs> I think many things. I mean, she accused us of being incredibly horrible to her, which um, well, none of it. None of it was pointed at her. It was just no. the outfit was a little bit unwashed. Is yeah. what I think what you said. Yeah. And it was a sweaty night in, in Halloweenville. Yeah. Man. It could have been me that made it stink. <clears throat> the thing is, my thing with Elphaba is, I thought when I met her, I was like, this is such a lovely person, and I felt so awful that people were picking on her appearance picking on her mannerisms mm. and i saw somebody that was like talented and seemed extremely nice and when i met her all of that was confirmed she was so lovely to me i can't even put it into words i felt so protective over her that i invited her to our podcast launch event as well a few mm -hmm. weeks later and i said to everybody like people were like what is she like oh my gosh she was because she was quite like very up and coming at that point everybody knew who she was but she was just like the girl that sang nobody really understood yeah and a lot of people like who susan met her that boyle, night like susan boyle sang. the girl who sang don't think that she'll love that comparison no, but the best comparison <laughs> yeah no <laughs> no like ariana grande yes although she did have the beef with her no, yeah no she did have the oh. show beforehand oh so she yes. wasn't just the girl who sings yeah that's actually true and uh, uh, ariana grande is in wicked full circle moment anyway she is wicked in that she is baby um but with Elphaba, I mean, I messaged her personally so she couldn't openly say any of this. I really don't mind. I personally just felt so disappointed in her as a person when she was at my house and told me 
the about her autism diagnosis the you know it happened when she went to the doctor she sat and told me this to my face mm. to then later find a few months later that she'd completely made it up none of that was true um she also said on like lives that she had Tourette's mm. and then found out that she'd never been diagnosed with that um she told me and showed me things that Chelsea Lee Arts which if you don't know who that is she's like this other TikTok live person she's the roots one yes she? that she had sent to her that I used to think that Chelsea Lee Art was like funny and I'd go about roots, whatever. When I saw the things that she had said to Elphaba, I was horrified that this woman has a platform. She was so transphobic to her, so nasty to her, so awful. And Elphaba told me how much that hurt her. Like genuinely, I saw it in her face. She was so hurt by what Chelsea had done to her and said about her that I was like, oh my gosh. Again, mm. that just made me feel protective of her. A couple of weeks later, she moved into Chelsea Lee Art's house and lived with her for over a week, just on live stream nonstop. Guys, come on, send the gifts, send the yeah, gifts, come on, send it. True, but they did make it to the top weekly ranking, <laughs> so. That for me doesn't mean shit, I'm so sorry. The fact that she messaged me having a massive go at me, trying to basically guilt trip me, saying, you know what it's like to get hate online, blah, blah, blah. The difference is, if I've ever put myself in a situation where I've got hate online, I have, first of all, removed myself from that, as in physically put my phone down, not give myself like the, not made myself go through the pain of it, of looking at mm. it every day. She repeatedly gets on a live stream every single day and hours after complaining that it's too much, tells people to give her money. Like says, give me money right now. This is not enough. I saw clips of her yesterday shouting at the camera saying, this is all you're giving me. This is nothing. I deserve more. If you want to see my face, then you need to give me more money. And I'm just so disappointed in this person that I thought yeah. was a genuinely lovely person. And I do believe has aspects of being a lovely person, but has got so swept up in this idea of begging for money and is just saying anything erratic crazy shit to get attention like it's wild watching it and mm. that's and i said that to her i was like i am just disappointed i think that you don't have integrity and when i started to hear about the vulnerable uh, vulnerable uh, vulnerable people and um saying that they've sent her huge sums of money i mean i don't know what's true things could be fake whatever but she's making a living somehow and it's by begging for money on the internet yeah and i, I think, just think it's so immoral i, I really do <clears throat> it's a it's a Obviously, the stuff that's been said and done isn't isn't right, but it's a mm. difficult one in terms of their job. Like, as our job is to post a TikTok or mm. a, vid a video or like whatever, we're lucky enough that we we've expanded into different avenues, like this, the podcast. Hey, um, <clears throat> but their thing is going live. That's how they make their money. Yeah. It, it puts you in this. Uh, I think ob obviously at one point they were making money where they're like. Phew, this is way too much. This is way more than my normal job or whatever. I'll, I'll quit. Mm. But then I think once it starts to go downhill and it's like, where's all this money going? Why, why am I not, why am I not getting the same amount of yeah. money? That's when it can start to become like a weird thing. And to know that to get the money, you have to go live. Yeah. As like, that would obviously take its toll. Not mm. excusing any of the stuff. No, that, I completely that get what you say. That, that, I think that's the reason why instead of it being, I don't know, it's just a weird situation to be in. Which I is think why it's I think a very toxic to make sure place to be. Um, stable outside of it in terms yeah. of mentally and financially. That is very true because I think she's somebody who is a nice person who's been swept up into a very toxic place. Mm. If you think about it, the way that you get money is you get more money when you act crazy. So it's positive reinforcement for acting crazy. And sometimes when you act crazy, you do things that are inappropriate and then years down the line or days down the line, it comes back and bites you. And you may not have even realized that you've done that. But the thing is now her and so many other people are in this toxic cycle of they need to be arguing with one another. They need to be doing this. They need to be doing that. But it's like, when will this end? Look at people like Paul Breach. Like when, when will that end? He's just getting yeah. more infamous <clears throat> from bad behavior it's it's wild so i just think alphabet if you're listening i hope that you sort yourself out because i like i've said to you i don't want to be friends with somebody who treats people like the way that you do i don't want to be friends with somebody that um lies about being diagnosed with autism and and uses it as an excuse like i yeah. don't want that anything to do with me um 
but I do believe that you are a nice person who has been swept up into a toxic workspace, kind of, and yeah. um, you need to sort yourself out, love. TikTok Live is a weird little world. Yeah, and we do not tolerate so you- any hatred or any no. like attacking of anything we are a positive vibes podcast hell yeah baby hell yeah um but what i find weird about tiktok live is that like there's loads of streaming platforms out there obviously you got your twitches your youtubes that people go on they'll sit there for ages like playing games or like quote unquote just chatting or like whatever it is they mm. do but like obviously it's built up over like a period of time because tiktok's so new and everyone's just like thrown into it yeah that it's 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 so trendy in terms of these people will now be getting this viewership these people will now be getting this viewership it's such a weird one that i, I would never want to go into that sort of world because yeah it, I, i'd constantly be like shitting myself like when yeah. is my end yeah whereas if you're like a twitch streamer it's like you build it all carry the time on doing what you're doing obviously adapt with the times and yeah. stuff but, but that's the thing though she was on a good track of like she was just singing <laughs> And like having good times with her friend Mm. and then she like kind of betrayed her friend and uh, and now has just gone down this route like i literally saw her last night being like how dare you only send me this much money like i'm not even going to come on live you don't deserve to see me if you don't say and that versus the person like before christmas when i met her they're not even the same person so it's 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 a wild situation but yeah hopefully she gets the help that she very clearly needs because this it's just wild at this point but hey ho baby let's do our freaking job oh wait i wanted to say one more funny thing okay. um sorry it might not it might not be so funny far? yeah <laughs> so, um when i posted the video at my sister's wedding yeah the comments were hilarious so obviously my sister got married to a woman yeah and people could not wrap their head around it like the people were literally commenting like oh my gosh love this i wish i got married on the same day as my best mate like was it cheaper to do a joint wedding like what did the men think (laughs) literally people were like where's the man i don't get it like are they just really good friends what's going on (laughs) we were dying at the comments they were so fucking funny someone was like hi hun thinking about um looking at a nice venue for my wedding too but they're just so expensive so i was going to do a joint wedding with my friend would you recommend it (laughs) and it was like what the people she literally got messages like how did you sort out the seating like did you do half your family half theirs like how did you manage it what what, like what was their thought process of like a lesbian wedding they were both in dresses weren't they yeah oh my gosh that's also the number one thing the thought like which one's gonna be wearing the suit then (laughs) george i swear to god every single time i've been around my sister and she spoke about a wedding or i've spoke about how i'm going to my sister's wedding she's getting married to a woman the first question that people ask are they both wearing wed- are they both sorry are they both wearing dresses and i wanted to turn around and be like no one of them's got a top hat a cane um and yeah she's gonna walk down she's dressed as the monopoly man so actually she put some socks down to just for a <laughs> temporary bulge literally i was like <laughs> what is going on like lesbians don't like uh, at my wedding are people gonna be like which one of you's wearing the dress like and of course max will go me yeah he it's, spins it's around. me but um yeah wild times hilarious times but yeah guys just come on like every i'm talking upwards of 10 people have I said can understand to me the um i think because when you the, think of a wedding what's it called the the thought process not the thought process the intrigue into yeah what the differences would be mm. but i i, I don't un- it's not attributing one of them with all of the male yes, things that exactly. happen that day. It's like, I understand. It's like, what is the difference? Is the question? I think, that... um, all right, this is quite interesting then. So I think, obviously, with it being a lesbian wedding, they didn't have to follow many of the traditions that are set out. Because a lot of mm. traditions with weddings just come from religion. Well, off the bat, I don't think they're doing... <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're not being traditional. So <laughs> literally, I think someone early on was like, so are you going to get married in a church? And they were like, um, no, <laughs> no, we're not. Um, but because of that, it got to be so much more fun. So they basically yeah. just got to pick which traditions they liked and then make the rest up. So when they had the person initiating their ceremony, it obviously wasn't a priest. Yeah. And at the normal parts where they'd say like, God said that one shall whatever, she literally just told a story of their relationship from start to finish. Yeah. So this official woman stood in front of us was like, it all she started. She was an official woman. She had a she badge that said woman on it. Yeah, she did. <laughs> she wasn't an intruder. She was an official woman. Um, she st- stood there and she was like, it all started with the Tinder swipe. And like, how great yeah. is that? Everyone was looking around, See, especially. I'd, I'd like that more because yeah. I, I feel like a lot of it's 
I mean, it's obviously each to their own. Mm. A lot of it is embedded in tradition. Yeah. It's like, I want to be in this lovely white ball gown yeah. in this beautiful church and stuff. But it's like, it's getting to the point now where everybody's so trying to, I mean, it's completely off topic, but like everyone, like if you ask your grandparents and stuff, they're like, oh, I love the royals. But now everyone's like, oh, I don't really like Same care. with religion so, like, I think and tradition. The, yeah, I think like everybody's sort of trying to break from it. I think yeah. it, it could be... Don't tell the bride will be so sick if the, if the bride's like, do you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, I love this Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get married on a roller coaster. Why not? <laughs> but it's so true. Like, people, I, I think when you think about it, they have this idea of a wedding as being, oh my gosh, we need to do all the traditions. But yeah. that's not normal. Nobody enjoys the traditions. Nobody's like, I can't wait to like sit there and sing a hymn. I can't wait to like feel awkward as like yeah. we're told that like our, our bodies are binded by like blood now or whatever. And it's like, no, actually, you can binded just sit by there. Blood. What I don't know. Have you I don't know what I've, I've gone to a few, about, bind you a few vampires. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was so great. And especially seeing the older people there, like their parents just be like, this is so much fun. Like, yeah. we're having the best time. They both got to pick um, a best man and a maid of honor because they were like, so fuck good. it. Like, yeah. like, so that's why I was the best man. I probably wouldn't have made the cut otherwise. Um, but <laughs> I was, was the, the best man. Honor. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it was very narrow. We were neck and neck. <laughs> Um, but that means multiple speeches and they were literally like from start to finish everyone just said it was the best wedding ever yeah. so wait for mine mine's gonna be better than Am that I be invited? yeah probably well I'd I mean, have to be I'll be opposite you yeah <laughs> yeah it'd be a bit awkward <laughs> if you did it by zoom um, I'll be in my dress <laughs> please oh my gosh I would actually let you come in a dress just oh <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave the honeymoon oh, to after God. it. That's for the wedding oh, night, Max. Gosh. Right, let's do our actual job now. <laughs> I've got an email. Oh, oh, lovely. Okay, is the printer working? I love our little printer. It's very cutie. I am an email, as I'm on the internet. The internet and you are mail. Mm, I've done very that true. one before, but um, no. I'm sure. People have forgotten. Well, I heard it. <laughs> By the way, guys, um, we have been filming for longer than we thought. Apo apologies, but we won't Apol go through that apologies. many. Apol <laughs> <laughs> we won't go through too many dilemmas today because um, we've got places to be. I'm going on holiday tomorrow, love. Next time you see me, you won't recognise me because I'll be so tanned. Is it multiple pieces of paper, this one? Yeah, that's it. Hi, Max and George. I'm low-key disturbed and traumatised, oh. and it gets worse with each passing day, so I really need advice, please. Oh. What do you do when someone starts using stuff that's been inside of you, <gasps> like completely up your vag to oh. cook and drink stuff? <gasps> this is an emergency. Oh. For context, I'm, a, I'm an Italian. This will be important for later. Okay. College student that is currently studying abroad. I'm also a bit of an introvert and hate confrontation. Oh. I've moved into an apartment that I share with three other people. At first, those were, those were all girls, but one moved out, and now there's three girls and a guy. Oh. However... Now that it's summer, everyone else but the guy, let's call him Jim, and I left to travel, oh. see family, etc. Okay. So, another important thing is when I'm on my period, I use a menstrual cup. Mm. It's a more eco-friendly alternative to tampons. They're made out of silicon and reusable. True. Uh, basically, you have to sanitize them every time you restart your period by yeah. soaking them in boiling water. This oh. is when gin comes into play. Oh, God. I finished cleaning my cup, turned off the stove, and left the kitchen for a couple of minutes to go to the bathroom. Oh. And when I came back, the stove was empty. My cup and the cooking pot, it was... <gasps> <laughs> were no. nowhere to be seen oh, no. I started freaking out thinking that my horrible sleep schedule was getting to me and I was hallucinating oh. but then I turned and saw Jim loading a couple of dishes into the dishwasher no. that's when I had the horrible realisation that Jim probably walked into the kitchen saw the pot unattended and put it into the dishwasher oh. I went up to Jim telling him that I could finish loading the dishes, dishwasher in the hopes that I could see whether, the, where, whether my cup was there yeah. he thanks me and moves out of the way and starts rearranging stuff in the drawers oh. I start looking inside the dishwasher and boom there was the pot oh. but no cup <gasps> <laughs> trying to wait for Jim to get out the damn kitchen so I can freely look around and see if I find my cup I finish loading the dishwasher and still he doesn't move he just stands there making himself a sandwich oh my god now I'm basically losing my shit and it dawns on me that at this point I had no option but to ask the man himself so the conversation went something like this oh my god God, I'm so excited <coughs> to hear this. this is gonna, I'm going to do my female and male voice Right, here. I'm ready. Trying to keep my cool and not starting, uh, not start crying and throwing up at him for the stress he's put me through on the first day of my period. Hey, Jim. <laughs> him, completely unaware that my sanity is in his hands. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see something inside the pot that was on the stove? Oh, God. What pot? The only pot that was on the stove. I start considering whether it's best to kill Jim or to start flinging my shit at the walls like an ape. <laughs> Him. <laughs> I was just in the lip season there, so oh, okay. Me. 
Jim, it was literally there five minutes ago. I grab the fucking pot from the dishwasher and show him. This pot. Oh, yeah. He sounds kind of excited, which immediately makes me incredibly worried. Jim yeah. opens drawer, takes out my cup. My stomach churns. It's one of your Italian cooking things, right? <gasps> no. <laughs> so, so more context. Oh, my God. I literally brought brought with me a couple of wooden spoons and some cooking gadgets I like to cook. I'm Italian, so now this dumbass refers to anything as my I Italian cooking thing. <laughs> and now apparently the thing that has been up my vagina repeatedly is one of those oh! things. I'm mortified, but I do not have the heart or the balls to tell him what a <laughs> menstrual cup is. So I instinctively reply, uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, I knew oh. it. I think I've actually seen a bunch of these on videos. They like to measure stuff and try sources, <gasps> right? No! <laughs> Me wanting to die. Uh, yeah? Cool. Can I use it? Me about to jump out the window. Sure, sure. Oh my god. This happened a week ago. Every time I get my cut back, he ends up asking for it again. Turns out he really likes it. Now, I can't even use the damn thing because I've seen drink tomato sauce, seen Jim drink tomato sauce out of it, oh! which was just so fucking disgusting. I almost threw up. Oh. He won't stop using it and I'd honestly just give up and let him. But the other girls that live here will come back in a week or so and they definitely know what a menstrual cup is. Oh and I don't God. don't know what will happen when they see Jim using it as a measuring cup, shot glass or spoon. Oh. I'd also just hide it and tell him I broke slash lost it. But I'm scared that if I hide mine, he'll look to buy one for himself and find out what it is. <laughs> mine is called Lynette and it, and it has the name of that brand and it has the name of that brand carved into it. So it would take him just a Google search to find, find out the truth. I've been extremely nauseous ever since this started and it's ruining my life what should i do should i tell him should i let him let him live in his spoon cup fantasy world and let my friends break the news should i risk losing my dignity when said friends find out i've let our roommate drink out of my menstrual cup a lot please give me some advice p.s george you're so hot i'd let you drink out my menstrual cups and silly oh cup girl oh. i'll politely decline that thank you um oh. <clears throat> oh. you can understand why that was worth the read yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what do you say to that? I mean... What is the actual solve here? I mean, let's write. Let's She's think. already now. He's asked what it was. And he, she's she said, oh yeah, it's the cooking thing. So okay. the initial... Him ask it, him being confused what it was is gone. She can't yeah. then go, oh, you silly Billy. That's yeah. my menstrual Now girl. it looks like she wants him to use it. So it's, she's got in, herself in murky waters here. So, so she, there, both two two instances, well, all instances, she comes out as lying to him yeah. in, the, in the first place. But I think, firstly, congratulations on using a menstrual cup. It is better for the environment. Well done. Yeah, Max uses his daily. I do. Yes. Not daily. Um, no, monthly. Secondly. And I shot out of it for the rest of the <laughs> yeah. for the rest of the weeks. <laughs> Secondly, I think that we should destigmatize the idea that a period is disgusting. It is blood, so it's not that you not, you don't want to drink it. No, no, no. no. It yeah, is I mean, disgusting to drink it, one hundred percent. But I think that we should destigmatize the thing of oh, period. It's on your new period. Ooh, can't go near it. But drinking from it is a whole new level. Mm. Um, I think. Thirdly. You should have just said then and there. You should, but I th I don't know what I would say in that situation. I think if it's if it's this bloke that has moved into your house, you maybe don't know the best in the world, mm. but he's like, he finds that you're in this state of shock. He's literally like, had like gripped your menstrual cup and popped it somewhere, and is like, oh, is it that Italian cooking thing? He's given you your your easy out. You're not mm. thinking down the line. He's giving you an easy out where he think where you think. Oh, he's just going to let me use my Italian cooking thing in the future. Mm. You just go, yeah, sure. And then he starts shotting tomato sauce oh, out of it. Why did it have to be tomato sauce? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Right. I think let's pray that common sense came into play and that when he first saw the cup, he at least washed it out before he used it. Because at the end of the day, it's like a plastic cup. Yeah. That's fine. Even if it's been up your entire arse. You could drink out if of it, it after it's had a wash. Arse, I think you're menstruating wrong. But, um. <laughs> True. But you can at least use it and hopefully you won't get too much like bad stuff in your body that shouldn't be there. It's just not nice from start to finish, really. And you are partially responsible for not just being honest with the poor gentleman. Oh, but also, um, he is using your Italian cooking things. Yeah. He's not Italian. No. He might be cooking things. Yeah. But I think that thing might be an infection. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> very true and that's also a great way to end the clip um, uh, wow okay I mean yeah that's that great advice that we just gave there that's all I can possibly think to say I'm, I personally can hear the phone ringing can you yeah lovely I can. <laughs> right. there we go <laughs> from George so basically there's this guy from work that I've been like doing stuff with for the past nice. few months and stuff Rumpy, and then rumpy. I found out the other day that literally I was washing dishes and shit because I'm aware because I gave me and he was talking to another waiter as he was giving me the dishes to wash and she goes oh how's your girlfriend to him and then he goes oh yeah good and it's like oh when are you guys moving in so he's moving in with this bed and he's been doing stuff with me like he's fully just cheating on her with me and I don't know what the fuck to do like I can't find her to tell her anywhere like and he's still making moves on me even though he now knows that I know that he's got a girlfriend like what the fuck do I do pretend the conversation never happened keep getting that dick girl <laughs> <laughs> I mean fez <laughs> if you I mean I depends so, how good was the dick <laughs> no. so I um some of my old friends from uni yep um they would when I mean when you first go to university, yeah. this might have been the same for you. A lot of people cheat on their girlfriends yeah. and boyfriend. I mean, and boyfriends. Fresh is, is a it's a wild place. Freshers and and relationships do not go hand in no, hand. No, they don't. I broke up with my boyfriend. In they do. I remember when freshers came. I broke up with my boyfriend who I'd been with for like a good like six or seven months. Well, he broke up with me, shall I say? <clears throat> oh. And I slept with a lot of people. Nice. Freshers is a wild time. Anybody's just trying to, you know, you could put like a, a, a costume, uh, you could put a hat on a letterbox and I'm pretty sure that someone would put the dick in it thinking it's a person. Don't um, think they even need the hat. Yeah, true. Mm. They're just gagging for it. So um, Special delivery, who ordered the package? And um, Into what, the letterbox, they yeah, say. There we go. And what some of my friends would do is they would make so no sorry this one girl i don't really speak to her that much anymore but she would find the boy so we, we knew this big group of boys yeah. and a lot of them were cheating on the girlfriends and she just found that so immoral some girls are like really against it aren't they they're well, like against cheating yeah but like i know cool. no honestly <laughs> no but i mean they Get are like the times <laughs> cheating's cool now <laughs> no. no but i mean like they I can't take these girls that are against <laughs> cheating no i mean it to the point where like they would do what my friend did so she made an instagram account a blank instagram account nice to message these boys girlfriends and, and say edited hamsters in their house <laughs> <laughs> that'll get them <laughs> and say like right you don't know me you don't need to know me but i go to uni with your boyfriend and he's cheated on you with this girl oh. i'm so sorry but this is the truth of what's happening and, and i feel like you should know xoxo gossip girl. no but it was very that vibe <laughs> um so that's what i meant by some girls like they feel so passionate about it that they need to put an end to the misjustice yeah. injustice that's what that was i think for. maybe i mean they've done it to themselves so they've not yeah. really got a leg to stand on no but the i think the best way to go about it is confront them say I know what you've been doing. Yeah. And if they say, yeah, they go, what are you going to do about it? If they say nothing, say, well, I, if, if the, per I, I think if you've got nothing to do with the, mm. any of the parties, then don't. Yeah. But like if you're like friends with both of them or like whatever, be like, look, you, you have to say something because I'm not comfortable in this situation. Yeah. But then if they say, no, I'm not going to, I don't think I could then I don't go over to the person and be like, look, he's been cheating on you. I've kind of always wanted that moment for myself, though. What I've always to wanted be told to go up that? to some no to go up to somebody and be like, I have information. I love the drama of that. Like, you might want to sit down. I feel like after that you'd want to be part of all of the conversations. Yes, I would. I would <laughs> stick around. Yeah, like, I'd stick around. I'd be like, guys. No, no, Stephanie. James <laughs> has got something to say. Yeah, I would love it. I'd be <laughs> like, right. Kyling it. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, I'd kind of love that just to be like, right. So I found some information that you might want to sit down for. So um. He's cheated on you. Oh, oh and I love the theatrics of it. Here's a fun idea that I know you will lap up. Oh, okay. Right. For a a hypothetical live show, mm -hmm. oh. get 
a couple to solve their issues on it and you act as Jeremy Kyle. Oh my fucking God. George, <laughs> this is the best. You can narrate. You can narrate. I can be Jeremy Kyle. This is incredible. Oh my gosh. Right. So let's say in a theoretical universe where we maybe release a live tour, who knows what's going to happen. We're doing that and I want couples that watch this or even if you want a couple that watch this, if you are a person, you're in a relationship, be maybe, aware. Maybe not like so much so where we're going he's in the wrong bastard yeah. bar. maybe more mundane problems yeah. but you can still Jeremy Kyle it yeah oh my gosh George we need to write that down because that is incredible <laughs> right Jeremy <laughs> Kyle oh my god I want to be the new Jeremy Kyle I want it right okay brilliant love and that you, you just you have to sit on the step in front of them and go you already knew, you idiot! <laughs> just like start shouting about a problem that you have, like half an hour ago, you had no idea about. Yeah. <laughs> how dare you! <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited! Right, how much? You really time? cared? You'd be there for the kid. <laughs> right. Oh, I can hear the phone ringing. Oh my, oh my gosh. god, my ears are ringing. There's a kid. Hello, Max and George. I'm gonna make it short and sweet. Um, nice. Yeah, so. I Next went to mass famous. recently, not um, at my own choice, unfortunately. Mm. I was forced to go. Anyways, I was getting in line uh, like cattle uh, in the mart, in line to get the holy bread. And um, I started panicking because I didn't know to take the bread in my hand or to take it on my tongue or whatever. And like my time was quickly approaching. I was getting closer and closer to the front of the line. And for some reason, I decided to close my eyes. And um, I was a lot closer to the priest than I actually estimated. And I ended up licking his hand. <laughs> oh, God. And I think the worst part is that I opened my eyes in shock and saw the priest and he had this kind of look in his eye like he really enjoyed it. I just don't know what to do. I'm so mortified. <laughs> so she was getting bread from a priest at the end of a yeah thing communion and accidentally licked his hand. Yeah, that's incredible. Do they the priests feed you the bread as opposed to going? Have you never done take it? Take some bread and then you. Have you ever never done it? Not clearly not. Oh my god, George! I th I did this multiple times. Are you so doing at church? Yeah, I I once was like um at my old school we had a cathedral that we had to go to. I was in charge of giving the bread and wine out at one oh, of point. Of course you were. Everybody close your eyes. <laughs> I know it doesn't taste or feel like bread. <laughs> but give it <laughs> It's a very fleshy baguette this week. <laughs> give it a good suck and it'll it'll go down. Oh my god. No. <coughs> and I saw Here I think, comes the wine! <laughs> oh, I once did the year sevens. And when I tell Ooh, you Don't know if you tell this story. <laughs> No, I once gave communion to a bunch of year sevens in the cathedral. That sounds like such a funny sentence. <laughs> and I'm not even exaggerating when I say the amount of spit back that went into that glass, they all drink out of the same glass. Ooh. Every single person. Yeah. They would literally have it. This one kid, dirty little like acne ridden boy, came over. It's a bit of a mean name. Put it in his mouth. Obviously didn't like it. Spat it back in. What am I going to do? I'm in front of a full cathedral. Wait, do you think this was the dentist? I had no idea, but he was a dirty little bastard is what he was. Yeah, they were literally like, I was so many kids. I was like, this is just not okay. Like, oh, dirty, dirty bastard. How did you get into that line of work? Was it a volunteer sort of well, thing? I used to volunteer at the church, yeah, to do my Duke of Edinburgh. I used to have to go. I Who went else to, a... to do that? Was it the priest? <laughs> no. Max, we could do with some little hands around here. <laughs> I did, um... I, did, I went to a school that in order to get into it, you had to have gone to church every week up until you went to high school. You would not believe it, would you? I'm I'm ordained, not ordained. What's it called? What's it called? Communion. Communion. I've done communion. I had like the blood of Christ on me and everything. I can't remember what it's called, but I did that. I've been confirmed. I've been confirmed in the name of the Lord. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that about me, did you? Well, like the sorting hat. Pretty much, Max yeah. <laughs> I had to like say Ooh. a thing in front of the whole church and I my family. <laughs> Homosexual. <laughs> yeah. And they would go, go, go. go. I bit instantly just burst into flames. <laughs> that was a great time. I remember it well. Um, but yeah. Well, crazy how stuck can you be if you were uh, Hogwarts? Every single time I've done the test, such a half a bar. I get Ravenclaw. Without fail. The one that not, there's not even the funny one. That's just like... That's like the smart one. I'd say I am least Ravenclaw out of every single one of them. Like as every, uh, what like, I would think. Oh, I'm, I'm naughty. I'd be a Slytherin. Or like, oh, I'm such a goody-goody. Oh, I reckon I'd be Hog... I'd, I'd be a... Was it Gryffindor? 
or like, oh, I'm gonna do a funny one here. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a Hufflepuff. Ravenclaw. Think, That's boring then. No, Ravenclaw is cool. Ravenclaw's the smart people. Boring. In the um, game, it has the best common room. Boring though. No, it's not boring. It the blue. Boring. I like the color blue. I think, um, yeah, I, I would probably guess that I would be Hufflepuff as well. Yeah, because at the start, at the start of, say, if you were watching the film, right, mm. and, it, and the little extras go on, and they go like. Gryffindor, and like yeah. Ravenclaw. If they said Ravenclaw, you'd be like, oh, we're not going to see much of them then. No, but Ravenclaw <laughs> is like one of the most important houses. For what? One of the Horcruxes is in the um, Ravenclaw's diadem. It's just in their common room. Yeah, because it's important. Luna Lovegood, Ravenclaw. Fucking weird bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we should dig more into Harry Potter in another episode. That could be a themed episode one time. Oh, that'd be really cool. My gosh, I love Harry Potter. That would actually be really cool. I might do that. I'm going to save that. Oh my God, I'm really excited. Right. But we have come to the end of the episode because I need to go home and, um, I mean, I've just bought a house and I need to do pack my bags. I'm going on holiday. What a time to be alive for I me. I need to pack my current house and bring it to my <laughs> new one. Literally. Um, so, shall we just, um, any, any parting words? Um, if, you have some Italian cooking things in your kitchen. Make sure you confirm that they are Italian. Yeah, confirm that they've never been inside of a person. Not to confirm they are Italian. Confirm they are a cooking <laughs> thing, actually. Just say, well, I don't know any mm, Italian Taste words. Italian. Yeah. I bet it does, go, Jim. Go, I bet it tastes Italian. Um, right, thank you very much for listening. And George, tell them what they can do if they liked it. Well, if you liked it, you can do just that if you're watching. Like, subscribe, ring those notification bells so you're notified every time that we post. <coughs> if you are listening, slash audio listening, or visual listening, then um, make sure you give us a five-star rating. To download us so you can listen to us on the go. And just do all of the good, fun stuff if it looks like you can put a heart on it. Heart if you can yeah. five-star rate it, five-star rate it. I don't Woo. care. If I can like it, you prick. And um, if you made it this far into the episode, then please comment down below. I can't believe that George drank out of a menstrual cup. I think that's a great comment to put. Um, if you would like to send in a dilemma, please do so to our Instagram at the useless hotline pod. And if you would like to send a written one, then please do it to our email at the useless hotline podcast at gmail.com. That's Instagram if you want to send in an audio file and email if you want to send in a written one. Make them fun, you pricks. Please, guys. Please. And um, baby, until next time. Bye. I'm not going to see you for so long. I, for, I'm not going to see you for like three weeks. The smile. <laughs> I'm not going to see you for like three weeks. How does yeah. that make you feel? We're going to have so much to catch up on. We are. We actually are going to have Yeah, we actually are. On. And hopefully we'll both be tanned. I won't, but you probably will be. I mm. might be, hopefully. I think yeah. Sri Lanka's meant to be a bit. Yeah, it gives hot vibes. Anyway, love I you. Bye. Hot vibes.